Hello, hello everybody. My name is Jimmy Smith and welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel. Uh, this is our first in Argentina series. Argentina will have three parts to it for the WSET level three certificate. Um, the first two parts, part one, part two, will be free content available on this YouTube channel. And then part three will be available for members only on the Wine with Jimmy e-learning portal, which you can sign up to by visiting winewithjimmy.com. Uh, lots of goodies on there, including things like multiple choice questions, uh, mock answers and questions, flashcards, revision sessions, and greater video content, all very useful for you and your revision of the um, impending and forthcoming WSET Level 3 examination. Um, so all the social media is at the bottom of each slide if you'd like to get in touch and if you're that way inclined. And then you could always leave comments, concerns and questions in the comments section below this video on YouTube. Uh, great, so let's get rocking and rolling. There's a typical picture of Argentina. Um, you normally have these wonderful lush vineyards in the foreground and then dominated by the large Andes backdrop as you can see that just here. At the end of each section as ever there'll be a working written question which is designed for you to understand what kind of questions WSET are likely to ask um, and how you should structure your answers to give you confidence to go into your examination. Okay, so here is the map of most of Argentina, stretching for around 1,500 kilometers uh, in terms of its vineyard area north to south. So it's pretty significant in its um, length as a country, stretching from the Salta province down to Patagonia. Now, one big thing about Argentina is that it is dominated by mountains, and that is mainly the Andes and it therefore is hugely affected by those mountains, massively in terms of altitude. Vineyards are all scattered at differing altitudes, stretching from around 600 meters up to in the thousands, which is rather extreme. It needs to be that extreme to give you a moderating effect on this very hot, arid, dry climate, uh, but also altitude for cooler conditions. The only area that doesn't tend to have um, any kind of uh, high altitude for vineyards is down here in Nequen and Rio Negro, where it's Patagonia. You tend to find vineyards at lower altitudes at around sort of 200 meters or so. Um, so, yes, all about the altitude here. Um, the Andes also provides a rain shadow effect. And that rain shadow effect is because the wetter weather will come from, of course, the Pacific this way. Um, but, of course, it affects Chile with things like the Humboldt Current and coastal breezes and rain. It hits the Andes and, of course, it rains on the Andes and in the Andes. It therefore... Uh, the Andes gives a rain shadow effect to all of these regions on the eastern side where our wine regions are located. So therefore, it's remarkably dry. Somewhere like Mendoza only has around 200 millimetres of rain per year. To put that into context, somewhere like Bordeaux has about 800. Um, somewhere like Napa will have about six, uh, five or six hundred, something along those lines. So it's really, really dry as a climate uh, here. Um, the water that is needed will be drawn from rivers that flow down from the Andes. So you can imagine all the rain falling on the Andes and then flowing down out of the Andes. And that rain water is actually what is used for the vineyards and channeled into lots of ditches and also lots of flood irrigation is used in this area. But there is a big movement today towards drip irrigation. That is the irrigation where um, Little pipes uh, follow the fruiting wire of the vineyard and um, drip a, a controlled amount of water into the uh, into the vineyard, onto the rootstocks. 
So, um, so yes, it, it is uh, an area that's quite dry, but irrigation is a very necessary. Very few issues with things like mildew or rot due to the low amount of humidity and rainfall here um, and low disease pressure as well. It means it has a very high percentage of organic wines being made in Argentina due to the fact there is low amounts of spraying to combat mildew. So organic wines, just like South Africa, very high percentage of them. Um, the last thing we'll mention here is that a lot of vineyards are traditionally trained by the pergola or what's called the paral system, which is a very highly trained vine. We will actually cover that topic on the third uh, part when we look at Torontes and the white varieties of, um, of Argentina. Okay, so that is your overview slide of uh, Argentina. Um, I think the next thing we look at is something which is an issue in the area, and that is the effect of summer hail. This is a very common problem, specifically in the central area around Mendoza, the city of Mendoza, um, there is quite significant hail. And look at the size of that. Um, in Britain, we're used to hail being the size of a pea normally, but here you can get them the size of squash balls and tennis balls, which means at terminal velocity coming out of the, of the heavens, it's going to be exceedingly damaging. It can destroy buds if it is early on in the year, but normally we're looking at summer hail, so it will shred leaves, but with that size, it will just destroy them. So you can get anything from shredding leaves, um, damaging grapes, splitting grapes, rotting grapes, to absolutely devastating and destroying vineyards. They are very localized, so they don't cover the whole of Mendoza. It will be in very sp sporadic areas. So therefore, it can actually wipe out one person's vineyard and then not the next door's vineyard because it's quite sporadic and localized. Um, to protect against hail, um, often netting will be implemented, but netting is not, um, it's quite effective, but it's quite expensive and it's quite time consuming. So some people adopt that. But in fact, the principal way of combating against hail is to accept that it will happen to you but to spread out strategically your vineyards or where you source your grapes from. So for example, you may source, if you're making a generic Mendoza Malbec, you may source from around Mendoza East, Mendoza North. You may source from some from the Maipu, some from the Lujan de Coyo. Um, and that means that if one of those areas like Mendoza North gets hit by summer hail one season, you will rely on the other areas. It's strategic location uh, of your grapes um, in terms of locating your vineyards. Okay, so summer hail can be a significant problem. They said to actually lose up to 15% a year due to summer hail, and that's of the sixth biggest producer in the world. That's quite a lot of, uh, of grapes lost. Um, so here are your main regions for Argentina that you will need to know for your WSET level three. Now, in terms of this, we're not gonna go into too much detail about two of the big regions because they will be covered in depth in the next part two and part three. So part two will in fact, I'm gonna scribble this down so you're all well aware of this and I'll put this one in red. So part two will be all about Mendoza and you can see I'm scribbling part two just there. Um, part three will actually talk a lot about Salta Cafayati uh, and uh, and Torontes. So that is actually going to be covered in that one. So those two are quite significant areas. And Mendoza is split into subzones, as is Salta. That's why they're quite significantly important areas. So they will be covered on future, future areas. Then we have the others. So um, working our way south, um, actually, no, we're going to we're going to do this in terms of production amount. Um, so first and foremost, Mendoza is by far the biggest by a country mile, but that will be covered on a later session. San Juan, next. San Juan is just north of Mendoza into the Andes Mountains. Uh, and San Juan is the second biggest region in vineyards, stretching from around 450 meters to about 1400 meters of altitude. So actually mirroring uh, Mendoza quite a lot. And it really is just an extension up from Mendoza. So therefore that is quite logical. Um, it's quite noted actually San Juan for its Syrah, but it will grow the whole full gambit of grape varieties in San Juan. 
Um, next up is the third biggest region, and this is La Rioja. Um, so you may see, I mean, Rioja in Spain, La Rioja here, uh, La Rioja here. Um, now, if it exports, it actually will be called Famantina, um, but um, Famantina is a part of La Rioja, um, and the Famantina Valley is actually probably the most important part of it. Very well noted for good quality Torontes, um, but there is also quite a few other varieties found in La Rioja as well. And then finally, down in the south is Patagonia. So Patagonia is the low altitude zone. Um, often we're looking at around 200 to 250 meters of altitude around the Rio Negro, the Negro River, uh, and Nequen. Um, so this is cold due to the latitude of being quite south, uh, but they will get strong desert-like winds that may affect this area. Um, the low rainfall and wild, uh, wide diurnal range means there's quite low disease pressure, and the long daylight hours here, the, the, the luminosity plus the cool nights mean you get good concentration and freshness. Very well noted for lovely Sauvignon Blanc and very elegant and fresh and acidic Pinot Noir. But there are others grown down here as well. But those two tend to sort of stand out the most of those. So those three areas you won't need to know too much about, but please recognize those and perhaps talk about the, the key varieties behind those. Um, the ones you really will need to know is Mendoza and Salta, and that will be covered in part two and part three, respectively. Um, let's have a look at a, a video. Um, so this is going to be um, pretty much uh, just a, a general overview of these key regions. Um, so we're gonna fly a Google 3D Earth video down from Salta, I think, to Patagonia. So let's have a look at this lovely video. Here we go, just over a minute and a half, so nothing really special. There we are, that is Argentina, of course, bit of Chile on the western side, and that huge um, Andes mountain range. You can see how desert-like it is in certain areas as well. Here we go, focusing on the northern area of Cafayate and then the Salta province, look how high the altitude is up here. These are vineyards that are in excess of 2,000 meters. In Europe, the highest vineyards tend to be around 1,200 meters. So the fact that this is almost double, and in some instances more than double, this is extreme conditions, but it needs to be this high in order to grow grapes for the cooling effect of that high altitude. So that was the Salta and the Cafayate. Below that is La Rioja province, um, and as mentioned before, quite well noted for its Torontes, and that nestles below, including the Famantina Valley. Then below that, the second biggest wine region, San Juan, which is well noted for Syrah. Then below that, the big boy, producing probably today near 80% of the produce, which is Mendoza, um, which we're going to go into much greater detail in um, in that part two. And then finally in the bottom is Nehuen, Rio Negro within the Patagonian province. Low altitude, as you can see there, it's kind of getting a little bit lower, around 200, 250 meters, uh, and focusing on things like Pinot Noir and um, Sauvignon Blanc. Okay, so just to refresh our memories on altitude, Argentina is all about wines with altitude. So most vineyards, as you can see at the bottom here, um, sit at sort of 600, uh, 600 meters. And these are the vineyards that are around Mendoza City. Um, and that's a big, big area producing really the real volume of Malbec that will be seen across the world, but also local varieties. Um, now here it's really dry and hot. Grapes really race along to ripeness in a very short growing season, which means they don't tend to ripen their phenolics. The phenolics are the tannins, all the grape skins, and that's where you get the structure and dryness and, and power. Um, but what they do get is very high sugar levels to produce into alcohol. So what you get is really, 
real jammy, sweet, ripe characteristics, but often with quite soft tannins. And that's why I think Malbec is one of the most crowd-pleasing reds of the world. You've really got nothing that will be abrasive and upset people. And the two things that often upset people in wine is acid or tannin. The tannins here are sweet and soft, and then the acids tend to be actually quite balanced uh, and often quite light. Uh, and that means these are ripe, ready, um, juicy, jammy wines, which normally most people enjoy. But vineyards are then located more westward into the Andes in Mendoza and other regions like San Juan. And then, of course, more northernly as well, up in La Rioja and also the Salta province. As this happens, altitude at 1,000, 1,500 and beyond, you get more concentrated and structured reds, as it says here. You'll get higher natural acidities due to the cooler conditions, and you will be able to ripen the skins and the phenolics over a longer growing season. The ripeness of the skins take longer than the grape sugars. So therefore you get more structure, more tannic structure, more bitterness, and you also get the combination of having good fruit character because it's still Argentina, it's sunny, and it will have some good heat behind it. So basically, they're still very concentrated, but more acidic and more tannic. And these are the very great wines of Argentina in Mendoza, like the Uco Valley, for instance, and Turbanato as well, right in the northern part of the Uco Valley. Once you get up into 2,000, 2,500, 3,000, there are some wonderfully fresh and floral red wines up there, but really this is the land of white wines. And as you can see, it's, it clearly identifies this up here. This is where you find two to 3,000 meters, lots of torrontes uh, being produced, and even things like Sauvignon Blanc as well, which are produced as really aromatic varieties. So it is all about altitude in Argentina uh, and, and crafting the great wines by understanding that altitude. So let's have a look at the great varieties we have here. So Malbec is, of course, the principal um, black grape variety. Now, there are a number of grape varieties in Argentina, and a lot of them are local, specifically Criolla and Pius. Um, but you are not required to know those for your level three certificate. Malbec is the one, of course, of international acclaim, huge export market and a gaining national domestic market as well. This will be covered in part two of these three-part series of Argentina, the next part. Bonada is the second most planted grape variety as a red, late ripening and can, when yielded at low levels, can produce quite deep colored acidic and tannic wines, often with a red fruited backbone. But Bonada has been mass, uh, mass produced and mass consumed and often is quite light and aromatic and not as interesting as it really should be. But that is changing. The locals are starting to really focus on this wonderful grape variety. And of course, there's some Cabernet Sauvignon here, which can be a premium style. You'll often find this being grown at some altitude, certainly in the Mendoza province, and you'll find oak is often commonly used with it. Um, it can be blended with Malbec as well to produce a kind of Argentine Bordeaux blend. Um, and these can be quite structured with some good acidities behind them. So Cabernet Sauvignon, Quite, uh, becoming quite important. The white varieties, of course, lead with the really perfumed, floral and aromatic Torrontes grape variety, um, stemming from North Spain originally, really finding its home and its feet and its roots in Argentina. We will talk about Torrontes in great detail as an aromatic, reductively made white wine in part three of this three-part Argentina series. Chardonnay is our secondary grape variety here. Once again, can be premium, um, certainly grown at some altitude again and in slightly cooler conditions um, and with often a lot of new oak to give it that kind of buttery, rich characteristic with the Chardonnays. Mendoza has a fair bit of it again for Chardonnay. Other varieties grown, of course, you've got things like Viognier. There's even some good Rieslings being grown in the region. Uh, Semillon is quite a speciality as well. Um, so there are quite a few uh, others found in, uh, in, in the region. Um, and, and also look out for Chenin Blanc down in, in um, places like Patagonia. Um, in the red arena, there's a little bit more things like Pinot Noir in Patagonia. 
Tempranillo's becoming a bit of a speciality in Mendoza, and there's even a bit of Syrah and Merlot as well. So let's go through some questions so you understand what may be asked of you. One of the key things of Argentina is all about that summer hail. So um, it is a common problem for grape growers in Argentina. Why is it a problem? What is the issue with it? It's quite obvious to uh, think about this, but putting it into wine speak is what we're after here. Hail can damage grapes and even the vine itself, as per the WSET text. In the worst cases, it can destroy an entire crop. And that is, of course, why strategic planning is needed. That will normally be the follow on question. Here we go. The follow on question for uh, this um, summer hail point identify two ways you can minimize the impact of summer hail. Um, so first and foremost, strategic plantation of vineyards spread out over a number of sites will limit the impact of summer hailstorms that tend to be very focused and localized. So you will only use a proportion of your harvest and not the whole harvest. And of course, in certain areas, uh, netting will be used to offer some protection, but it is quite costly to implement. So it's basically stating a way and then talking about it a little bit. That will get you the four marks. If you just put strategic plantation of vineyards and netting, you'll just get two marks there. You are required to um, discuss it a little bit more. If it was only two marks available, please just put strategic plantation of vineyards and netting, but there are four marks available here for this one. So something about true or false here. So a little different to normal, but let's see if you can get these before I reveal the answer. Most vineyards in Argentina lie above 1500 meters. So we know Argentina has very high altitude vineyards, but in fact, most of the vineyards are located at around 600 meters, probably up to about 900 meters altitude around Mendoza City. So therefore, this is false. It certainly has vineyards in 2000 and 3000 meters, but we are looking at most vineyards in this question. From north to south, Argentina's vineyards stretch, stretch for a whopping 600 kilometers. Is this true or false? This is actually also false because uh, the 600 number you may have recognized is actually where most vineyards lie at in terms of altitude. Um, the north to south from Salta to Patagonia, um, the vineyard stretch were actually around 1500 kilometers. So that's actually kind of mixing up the numbers with the first question there. A little bit challenging, but hopefully you got those. Um, Argentina has a high percentage of organic wines. Is this true or false? This is, as we mentioned earlier, true. It is a dry climate, which means you do not have to spray with things like copper and sulfur too much, which means you are you have the possibility um, very easily to produce organic, uh, organically grown grapes. Next question. Mendoza is the is Argentina's biggest production wine region. Of course, that is a big fat true um, because it is by far the most and one of the biggest wine regions in the world. That one's quite easy. Uh, what's next up? Oh, it's going to be very slow. It's not loading for me, this one. Here we go. Salt the province is the second biggest producer of wine in Argentina. We know Mendoza is number one. That is actually false because San Juan is the second biggest, and that's just north of, our, of Mendoza. If you get your geography right, that's quite logical. Mendoza would spread out into San Juan, therefore having a similar climate and similar production. Well, not similar production, but a, 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 the next biggest production. Next question. Uh, Argentina experiences significant issues with mildew and rot. Now, we can link this to the third question down. This is, of course, also false. Um, because there's a lack of rainfall, um, there are a lack of humidity, that means that things like mildew and rot are at a minimum. That's why we have a high percentage of organic wine. So that is, of course, false. And um, now I think this is the last one. Newer vineyards 
are more likely to use flood irrigation. So we talked a little bit about this at, right at the start. Um, flood irrigation is when water is taken from the streams and rivers that come down from the Andes and it is uh, really directed into the vineyards in ditches. This is the kind of ancient or old method of irrigation. So therefore, newer vineyards will not tend to use this. They will tend to use more drip irrigation, which is more modernized and mechanized and also more uh, moderated in terms of what it pumps into the soil. So therefore, this is also going to be false. So five falses, two trues on that little list. I think that's all done. Yes, I hope you found that very enjoyable and informative, and I really hope that it helps you with your confidence and preparation for the WSET Level 3 examination. Um, my name's been Jimmy Smith um, of Wine with Jimmy plus West London Wine School, South London Wine School and my wine bar Streatham Wine House. Next time you are in London, please come and see us for a class, a glass or a bottle. Thank you so much for your time and attention. See you soon.